I get ready here, get pumped. It's January Giallo here at Cinematic Void. Huh! everyone, Jim Branscom here for the Cinematic Void Vlog. 2023 started off on a very busy note for the Void because we just wrapped up January Giallo 2023. If you don't know what January Giallo is, it's basically this event I've been hosting through the American Cinema Tech since 2017. And I just show some of my favorite Italian produced crime thrillers. You get black love killers, you get lots of kinky sex, and an ample amount of J&B whiskey just for the fuck of it. For the past couple years, I've been teaming up with some of my friends and fellow programmers to kind of expand January Giallo across the country and put it in other venues. And this year was the biggest year yet. January Giallo ended up being in about 10 different venues across the country. Theaters include my friends at the Coolidge Corner Theater, the Music Box in Chicago, C Film Center in Denver, Majestic Theater in um, Arizona, the Little Theater in Rochester, New York, Central Cinema in Knoxville, the Belcourt Theater in Nashville, Tennessee, and Cinema Salem in Salem, Massachusetts, and my friend Eddie Grow, who does all the social media for Cinematic Void, he's the marketing manager, he even put on screening as Popcorn Reef in San Diego. Besides hosting my own screenings in Los Angeles, I actually traveled to a couple of the other venues and hosted screenings there, which I'll talk about as I do a week-to-week -week recap of what was going on in January Giallo, at least the events that I was at. For week one of January Giallo, I got to kick things off in, at the Lost Fields 3 by screening an absolute bucket list title for me, which is Lucio Fulci's A Lizard in a Woman's Skin. I've been dying to be able to show a film print of it. Harry Guerrero, who does Exum Films and Garage House Pictures, actually imported a print over from Italy back in October for their big like 24-hour marathon and he was nice enough to hold it over so not only I could show it but the Coolidge and Music Box could show it as well. The print was a beautiful Technicolor print which looked absolutely gorgeous on the screen but it was an Italian language print so we had to do soft subtitling and it really wouldn't be January Giallo unless the Black Love Killer showed up. So this movie has a pretty all-star <laughs> cast. It's got Florinda Walken, who is also in Don't Torture a Duckling. It has um, John Sorrell, who's also in uh, Perversion Story, and a bunch of the Carol Baker kind of jally. No! What? No one wants to hear this shit, Jimmy! <laughs> who is that? Why does this sound oddly familiar? <laughs> the movie was shot by Luigi Colbert, who also shot Barry Argento's Deep Red, as well as Fulci's New York Ripper. It's a great pedigree of stuff. Because you weren't invited. <laughs> In other January Jalo Week 1 festivities, I actually traveled cross-country and went to the Coolidge Corner Theater to hang out with my friend and fellow film programmer Mark Anastasio for their kickoff screening of Sergio Martino's Torso. This again was a rare Italian language print and it was really great to watch that with a crowd who hadn't seen the movie before. January Jalo was started uh, by a fantastic film series out in Los Angeles called Cinematic Void. And uh, we're thrilled that Cinematic Void programmer Jim Branscom is here with us tonight to introduce this screening. He's gonna tell you about our upcoming shows and all sorts of everything you ever wanted to know about Jalo is what Jim's gonna give you. And uh, I would be so happy if you would give him a warm, cool after midnight welcome. So, has anyone not seen Torso tonight? Ooh, that's great. So, little context here. This is directed by the great Sergio Martino, who I consider probably one of the premier Giallo filmmakers. Sergio Martino made all kinds of movies. He made Westerns, he made Euro Crime, he made insane things like American Rickshaw, but I think, pound for pound, I know people are like, what about Don Rio? No. Pound for pound, I think he made some of the best GLA film out there. He, uh, he started out with a film called Strange Vice and Mrs. Ward, he made, starring Edwidge Fennick. Any Edwidge Fennick fans out there? Yeah. yeah. Well, he made three movies with her. That one's 
Uh, your advice is a locked room and only I have the key. As well as all the colors of the dark. He loved all titles. He also made a movie called The Case of the, of the Scorpion's Tail, and his last GI he made after Torso was The Suspicious Death of a Miner. So, again, all long titles except for Torso. Except Torso's title is the only the US title. This movie is actually called the, the Body Shows Traces of Carnal Violence. <laughs> when it came to the US, they were like, you know what? Torso! And it was also nice to hang out with Mark and also fellow film programmer Kay Lynch of Cinema Salem and Salem Horror Fest. For week two of January Jallo back at the Los Feliz 3, I showed Formula for a Murder directed by Alberto De Martino, who did things like The Antichrist and Strange Shadows in the Empty Room. This is a really rare Italian language print, and it's also not available on Blu-ray or DVD in the States, so it was a real treat for the audience to see it. Also for week two, I hopped on another plane, this time went to Denver, Colorado to the C Film Center, where I got to host the screening of the American Tinge Gialli Deadly Games, but before that, I hung out with Teresa, who does um, Screen Scream, and she took me on a tour of the Vinegar Syndrome store in Denver, which is called the Archive. There's two archives. There's one in Connecticut and one in Colorado. And got to check it out. Got to check out where all your Blu-rays and slip covers ship from, at least if you're on the West Coast. And then got the host of screening with her, as well as Keith Garcia. But it's also uniquely American. If you watch a lot of 70s Giallo films, you see lots of, like, decadence you see like great you know house like some of the best houses ever seen like i'm envious of like what people used to live in in the 70s in italy you see people dressed to the nines you see all that stuff this is very american it's a very small town it's a swinger town i don't know why it's a swinger town but and you'll see the people like why is this a swinger town but it's this takes place in a swinger town the murders are great in this movie it also stars colleen camp any clue fans at a certain age, you will very well remember Colleen Camp. She is in this movie. This is one of the three movies that are very confusing in her filmography. She did Deadly Games. She did Death Game, which I believe you played pretty recently, too, with um, Sandra Locke and Seymour Cassell. And she was also in Game of Death with Bruce Lee. <laughs> a very confusing filmography. Now, week three for January Giallo kind of bucked a trend. I normally don't do Q&As during this because... Usually the age of the movies, kind of like most of those people were either in Italian or they're no longer on this mortal coil. However, I was very fortunate that actor Barry Primus showed up for my screening of Autopsy. Now, Barry wasn't the biggest fan of this movie, but he actually opened up and asked the audience to tell him why they like these kind of movies. You know, in a funny way, it's like a deranged Bunuel movie. <laughs> <laughs> Bunuel makes you believe, you know, he tricks you into thinking that something's real, that's not true, because you really believe it, and then and then it's it's, it's scary and horrifying. But I, I think there is there is something about the surreal aspects, the dreamlike aspect. I couldn't tell you this plot. Can anybody get a hold of it? I have no idea what, what you know what anybody. I could tell you the plot, but that that's all right. Week four, I screened one of the weirdest Jally films ever made, which is Death Laid an Egg. It basically takes place on a genetically modified chicken farm where they grow chickens without heads, and there's a murder mystery element. It's very weird. It's got an abrasive soundtrack. Screening sold out, and as you can guess, because there's a black love killer in it, the black love killer showed up once again. Oh, hey, what's up, guys? Are we talking about poultry here? Oh, no. Did, did you just put Herschel from Blood Freak's mask on top of your head? Like you're, it's like fucking kids trying to sneak into an R-rated movie. For this. Like no, ask me anything. I'm him. What <laughs> drug were you on in the movie, Blood Freak? Blood. No. So. Chicken 
right. Give it up for Ty and his chicken walk. Got a little high step there. The next day after death laid an egg, I hopped on a plane and went out to beautiful but freezing fucking cold Chicago to host a screening at a tightrope with my friend William Morris. Will I used to work with at the American Cinematheque. He moved to Chicago. He does the, he's part of the Music Box of Horrors. He does their 24-hour marathon as well as monthly programming with it. So it was really great to see Will. I hadn't seen him since maybe 2018. So it was great to host a screening with him again. We were showing Tightrope, which may be like, what does Clint Eastwood have to do with a giallo film? But let me tell you, it's one of the best examples of American giallo. And I was, I thought it was a really good pick. And that's what I kind of love about January Giallo is I don't really interfere with anyone's lineup. They just kind of tell me what they're going to show. And I, I love that people are pushing the limits of like what they can mix in. They're showing classics, they're showing American Giallo, they're showing Neo Giallo. It's, it's really cool. And I really love what everyone did with their lineups this year. But they also started January Giallo and have worked to spread it across the country. We are very lucky tonight. Uh, my buddy, Jim Branscombe, left LA after screening a movie last night there at 5 a.m. to make sure he could get here tonight for all of you. So please give it up for the founder of January Giallo and Cinematic World, Jim Branscombe. You can figure this out. I, this place is way fucking high tech more than I used to in LA. All right, how's everyone doing tonight? I'm gonna ask you to do a little bit better because I have not been to fucking sleep last night. I showed death laid an egg. I tried to go to sleep. I woke up, I went to the airport and I came here. So how's everyone doing tonight? Much, much better. As Will, who I used to work with at the American Cinematheque said, I'm Jim Branscombe, I host Cinematic Void. I've been doing this for seven years this February. I started on Valentine's Day. Will and I actually showed Necromantic 2 one year for Valentine's Day. It was a weird corpse fucking night because we showed Corpse's Bride. What was the, what other shit was Love it? Me Deadly. Love Me Deadly, yeah. Another great Necromantic so, movie. So, we've been on the same page for a while, but <laughs> it, it's a huge honor to be able to bring January Giallo to Chicago in the Music Box. This is one of the great historical theaters, and it's great to see a movie, what we're going to watch tonight, which is Ultra classy from one of the, I guess, would you say great American actors? Sure, sure. Maybe. You can say that. <laughs> great American oiled up ass, I guess. <laughs> also, one thing I want to mention about Chicago is what the fuck is this demonic Harry Carey statue in front of Wrigley Field? Like, what is this? It's, does it just, what was Harry Carey doing? Was he eating souls? For week five, I closed out January Giallo at the Lost Fields 3 by showing my personal favorite, Neo Gialli, I Know Who Killed Me. I'm sure there's a few of you who like that movie, that, you know, the Lindsay Lohan one. Yes, it is one of the best examples of a American style Gialli. And look, it's got everything you want in a Giallo film. It's got sleaziness, it's got ample drinking, there's a club killer, there's some nasty, nasty kills. And, you know, it's got a cool color palette and it's well directed, it's very flashy, and it's also fun to. Watch with the audience. You haven't lived until you've sat in an audience and heard Lindsay Lohan utter the title of the movie, I Know Who Killed Me, in the actual fucking movie and watched the audience just lose their shit. Not only was this a really, really fun screening, but we had a Giallo fashion show beforehand and we had a special guest. We had the director of I Know Who Killed Me, Chris Sievertson, and of course, the Black Love Killer played by Deanna Rooney. And that's the number three, the Dora Man. <laughs> Contestant number four, the killer from tonight's movie. Contestant number five, the Red Queen Kills Sometimes. And contestant number six, do you have an audio cue? From opera. <laughs> and after the screening, Chris joined me back on stage and we did a Q&A after the film talking about basically the giallo-ness of I Know Who Killed Me. Since this is January and January Giallo, I would just want to ask you, like, were you influenced by any Giallo films when making this? Def definitely. Well, that was just like, uh, it wasn't like I was consciously trying to make like a, my own Giallo, but it was like, to me, the material was like just totally in sync with that stuff, particularly like, like the first, I don't even know if you guys haven't read the, 
Jim's article in the zine about um, about giallos, you, you got to do it because it, you break down really well, uh, kind of like what is a giallo and what is not, uh, and you know Argento's uh, Stendhal syndrome, which I had stumbled into the North American premiere of at the Cinematheque back when they were at Rally Studios in wow. the 90s. I was at <laughs> USC. That was my entrance to not only to giallos, but also to uh, Italian horror in, gen in general. Like I hadn't even seen Suspiria at that point. I just, I think I had found like the, um, like the program for the Cinematheque at like probably like Aaron's Records. I was like, hey, this sounds cool. And just went and like my mind was totally blown by the Stendhal syndrome and how uh, like mean it is. Like that's Argento's meanest film, I think. That wraps up this episode of the Cinematic Void vlog. Got a whole bunch of Void stuff coming up this year. So if you're in, not in the theater, make sure you're checking out the Cinematic Void podcast where I talk about what's coming in theater and check out, keep following and watching the vlog where I talk about basically the aftermath and show you what's been going on. So until next time, see you in the void.